Hello watch fans, it's Anders here on Watch On Channel. Today I'm very excited to bring you a review of a micro brand dive watch that really took me by surprise. So I was contacted by the company. They asked me if I wanted to review their dive watch and of course I said yes because I thought that this watch looked interesting. So it comes in this nice black leather watch roll and then you open and just before I show you the watch, if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, please do. It's a big help. Also, don't forget to like and comment this video. So let's see what's inside of the watch roll. You open here and you find a lot of cool stuff. So here you find a fiber cloth, always useful. You also get an extra rubber strap for the watch with quick release spring bars. Then you find the diver's manual. It's a reverie diver. A lot of different information about the watch. And of course you find the watch and here is the watch. So I already did size this watch because I actually have been wearing the watch as I've been taking pictures for my Instagram profile. If you don't follow me on Instagram, if you don't follow the channel on Instagram, please do. You can find the link down in the description or you can see it on your screen now. So here we have the Reverie Diver. This is a dive watch from the Singaporean company Reverie. They do these kind of classic looking sport style watches. They kind of mix different styles into their watches. And this is a dive watch, but very classic looking. And what they are quite known for within the micro brand community is the Gios style dial. As you can see here, the center part of the dial. So this is an automatic dive watch. It comes in four different versions. You can buy it with a blue dial, a green dial, a red dial, or this silver dial. It's made of 316L stainless steel. It has sapphire crystal on both sides because you can see the movement from the see-through case back. Completely flat sapphire crystal to give it a very modern look, although kind of some of the design cues of this watch is more classic, more vintage inspired. I kind of think it's a nice fusion between classic, vintage and modern. So inside of this watch, you have the Myota 9039, which is a high beat 4 hertz movement. It has 42 hour power reserve. And as you can see on your screen now, this is very accurate. It's very reliable. I get between three and five seconds plus per day, which actually is within chronometer certification standards. But this is of course not a COSC certified watch. Having a look at the case, you can see you get some nice brushing on the sides. Here you see you get a really nice chamfering here, which is high polish. Very short locks. I will give you the measurement just in a second. Signed crown with no crown guards. The bracelet is tapering very dramatically downwards, which is really nice because it just gives this a very good look at the wrist. Then you get a very secure but rather long clasp. There's a reason why this is this long reverie on the fold over. And then you open the clasp here. You have to have some nail because, and this is just a little annoyance with the design because the clasp is very close to the fold over. So you have to really get some nail under to open. And then you get this nice milled metal. This is high quality. It is kind of reminiscent of what you see with Rolex watches with the Rolex clasp, of course, not the same quality, but really well made, very sturdy, very secure. A very interesting thing that is that you actually get that's why I'm talking about this long clasp and also mentioning Rolex because you get this glide lock. As you can see, you can actually undergo adjust the watch. The problem with this glide lock is if you remove links from this part of the this side of the bracelet, as you because of the this dramatically tapering links, then if you want to actually have it all the way in, you can't fit the bracelet into the clasp. So you only the way I adjusted this watch get maybe like a centimeter, which is definitely really nice because you can always just adjust it a few millimeters on the go if your wrist expands. But it's kind of a 
annoyance and maybe a little design flaw that you actually can't use the whole glide lock because the bracelet is polished on the sides and has a really nice brushing on the top and all three parts of the bracelet here. It's split pins, but this was one of the very easy bracelets with split pins to adjust. You get a 120 click unidirectional bezel, which is aluminium, as you can see with the numbering engraved into and a white triangle at 12 o'clock. Everything aligns perfectly. As you can hear, really nice sound. This is a very audible bezel. It really makes some noise. It's, it has this kind of metallic sound. It's very easy to grip because of the coin etching. And it's very nice with the kind of, it has some nice stiffness, which makes it feel very secure. The crown has some knurling and it's a screw down crown, which testaments to the 200 meters of water resistance of this watch. The movement has hacking, as you can see the second hand stopped, and it also has manually winding, so you can wind the watch. So a very interesting aspect of this watch is of course the dial, and let's have a look into the dial here. It's kind of built in several layers and in several parts. If you look at the outer part, the rehort, you have the minute and hour markings, even second markings they can be used for, which is this kind of light gray. Then you have a ring, which is this kind of brushed metallic look with applied hour markings. And then the center part of the dial is this kind of guilloche pattern, which is of course machine made, but it looks amazing. And you can see just in the light how it actually plays with the light. And this is why I think this watch is much more of a kind of a dressy dive style watch than a tool dive watch, but it can hold 200 meters of water resistance and it's sturdy and it's well made. The hands are these classic sword style hands and then you get this really cool orange second hand with the white tip which actually just aligns perfectly with the outer part of the dial reverie at 12 o'clock and then the water resistance above 6 o'clock, no date of course. Having a look at the case back, you can see the Myota 9039 movement, which is really nicely finished for a micro brand. This watch is priced at 490 US dollars, but you can actually get 15% of discount if you use the link down in the description or the code down in the description. And then you get very close to 400 US dollars. Comparing this watch to, for example, a $500 Seiko, the quality of this watch is way above. Let's have a look at the case back here or the movement. You can see the waves on the rotor and the nice finishing of the movement. Just another testament to this Reverie Diver being very attentive to details. And that's why I'm a really big fan of this watch. It does have its, its quirks and its little annoyances, but overall, I really like this watch. I never got to the size, and of course we want the size. And again, this is really, really a good choice from Reverie. You get just short of 40 millimeters in diameter, thickness of just short of 12 millimeters, a lock width, at 21, which is of course annoying, but you get an extra rubber strap with the watch so you can easily change. And then a very interesting measurement of just 42.6 millimeters from lock tip to lock tip. This makes this watch wear very classic and smaller on the wrist. So this is how the Reverie Diver wears on my 18 centimeter wrist in circumference. And as you can see, it does have its presence. It's in no way a very small watch, but the design just makes it wear very, very classic. It feels actually like wearing maybe my Tudor Black Bay 58. It's just a very classic and comfortable feel on the wrist. And that's just, once again, the attention to detail that Reverie actually puts into this watch. Of course, we also want to see the loom. And as you can see in the screen, this is very well applied. And a really cool thing is that Reverie actually uses two different colors. So you get BGW9 blue, and C3 green, which is really, really cool. So you actually get two different colors. This is a limited watch. The four versions is only released in 125 examples of each color. So have a look at the website if you're interested before they go. Closing remarks. Overall, this is one of the very best micro brand dive watches I have tried in a long time. It's the attention to details. It's the 
kind of courage that Reverie has to actually make a different, more dressy style diver. Everybody is just making almost kind of the same watch all the time, but Reverie actually took the step to make something more unique and the whole way that the light plays with this watch, the accuracy and every attention to detail that they put into this watch is just making this watch a very, very high end micro brand dive watch. And Paying below 500 US dollars for this watch, I think you're getting a really, really cool deal. But it does have its problems, of course. And I think definitely a problem is the long clasp. It just annoys me a little bit to have this big long clasp. It's almost as the clasp is almost as long as the two sides of the bracelet. It's not a big annoyance on the wrist, but still. Then we, as I showed you before, have the problem where you really have to use some nail to open the clasp. It would have been nice to maybe have kind of a circular cutout here because the clasp would actually go over and then you have maybe have a little circular just like this. So you, you need to have some nail. It's actually quite hard to open. And then we of course have the issue with the glide lock. It's actually not attention to detail to actually have such a dramatic table to the bracelet when you can't actually actually use the whole glide lock. It's not a big problem because it's a really useful thing and just one centimeter is really, really nice to have. So this was the review. I hope you enjoyed the full review of the Reverie Diver. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to visit the company on their website. Leave a comment down below. What do you think about this watch compared to maybe a $500 Seiko? Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and follow me on Instagram and Facebook and subscribe to the channel. Thank you. Bye.